In this last section, we're going to talk about um, venous disorders and shock. So um, we're going to start on, on page 18 of the PowerPoint. So varicose veins um, are a pretty common disorder. Um, you get irregular, dilated, torturous, I like that word, areas of superficial veins. So um, rather than running straight, the veins bulge and um, they're irregular. Um, there's a familial tendency to varicose veins, so you might get them, you might not. Um, it A lot of times, um, risk factors include increased body mass index, um, parity, and weightlifting, because weightlifting is putting a lot of um, pressure on your veins. Parity means uh, pregnancy, um, multiple pregnancies. Um, in the legs, um, varicose veins can develop from a defect or weakness in the vein walls or valves, um, and they appear as irregular, bulgy, purpley structures on the legs. So um, I'm sure most people have seen varicose veins, um, but there's a little diagram, and there's a diagram in the book as well. Um, the treatment for varicose veins is to uh, wear support stockings, um, keep the legs elevated, um, avoid restricted clothing and crossing your legs um, because that just further um, restricts the um, veins. Thrombophlebitis and um, phlebothrombosis. Um, thrombophlebitis is where a thrombus develops in an inflamed vein. Um, like an IV site can be inflamed um, and you get a, a clot that develops there. Um, in flavothrombosis, um, the thrombus forms spontaneously without prior inflammation, and it's attached loosely. So um, they sound a lot the same, but there is a little bit of difference. Um, so the factors for thrombus development include stasis of blood flow or sluggish blood flow. So when we talked about um, the consequences of immobility, last quarter, this could be one of them. You get stasis of blood when you're not moving around and you can develop um, thrombi. So um, endothelial injury and on the insides of the veins can um, cause you to develop the thrombus. Just because that irregularity, platelets are sticky and they might stick to it and start to form a clot. Um, increased blood, blood uh, coagulability. Um, so you're just more, if your blood is thicker or s the blood flow is sluggish, um, you are more likely to form a clot. So a lot of times that's when they use blood thinners um, to help prevent that clot formation. So a lot of times these go unnoticed. Um, that there might be a symptom that uh, is easily ignored like fever, malaise, leukocytosis. You're not going to know unless you get a blood test. Um, aching, burning, and tenderness in the affected legs can um, happen. Um, the complication with thrombophlebitis is you could get a pulmonary embolism. So if a thrombus breaks off, it becomes an embolism. So an embolism is a traveling clot. A thrombus is a stationary clot, basically. And that traveling clot can travel up to your lungs and block something off. Um, so the treatment for um, thrombophlebitis and flavothrombosis are um, preventative measures. Exercise helps because you prevent that blood stasis. Elevating your legs, um, anticoagulation therapy if it's indicated, and sometimes surgical intervention. If you have um, clots, sometimes they will um, implant a little mesh in your vein to keep that clot from traveling someplace else. So um, pulmonary embolism is pretty serious. You can uh, get compromised breathing. It's usually usually get hospitalized for that. Um, it's something that we definitely want to be aware of um, in our post-surgical patients. We want to um, notice if they report any um, differing symptoms. Um, we definitely want to refer that back to their doctor because um, we don't want that to become a problem. So shock, basically there are lots of different types of shock. We're going to name them out here. But the, basically the definition of shock 
is inadequate perfusion of oxygenated blood. So lots of different things can cause that. So hypovolemic shock is uh, basically caused by blood loss. So you get loss of circulating blood volume. So say you had that aortic aneurysm that we talked about in the last section, you could go into hypovolemic shock um, because you're bleeding into your um, internal uh, compartments and you're losing blood volume in your circulatory system. Um, cardiogenic shock is um, caused because the heart cannot maintain enough cardiac output to um, supply the circulation. So it's still inadequate perfusion of oxygenated blood, but it's caused by the heart's inability to maintain um, an adequate cardiac output. So there's also distributive, vasogenic, neurogenic, septic, and anaphylactic shock. So we talked about anaphylactic shock a little bit last quarter in the, um, the uh, inflammation chapter, um, or I'm sorry, the immune system chapter. Um, and all of those things cause changes in peripheral resistance that lead to pooling of the blood in the periphery. So you still get that inadequate circulation of oxygen. Um, so that's, that's really the important, the key thing in shock. So if I asked you on a quiz, um, what is shock? The right answer would be that it's inadequate perfusion of oxygenated blood, whatever the cause. So of course, the way we're going we're gonna to treat shock in a first aid situation, we're going to treat it the same way. We're going to um, have a person lie down, elevate their legs. Um, we're going to monitor their vitals. We're probably going to maybe call 911, <laughs> um, but when they go to treat it medically, um, they have to look at what the cause of it is. So it might be that they've lost too much blood, it might be there's something wrong with their heart, there might be other issues. Um, so whatever the cause, um, shock is that lack of circulating oxygen. So this is the chart from the table that has all these nifty um, the type, the mechanism, and the cause. So um, it's just nice to know what the different causes of shock can be. The early manifestations of shock are anxiety. Um, you're not getting enough oxygen, that can cause anxiety. Tachycardia, the heart speeds up to try to supply more oxygen. Pallor, you're pale because you don't have enough oxygen <laughs> in your blood. Lightheadedness, um, syncope, which means fainting, um, sweating, and oliguria. Um, the compensation mechanisms, um, that how, the way our body responds to shock, we get sympathetic nervous system and adrenal medulla stimulation. So that anxiety, that is one of the um, symptoms of sympathetic involvement. So the sympathetic nervous system and the adrenal medulla are stimulated to increase the heart rate, increase the force of contraction, and it um, gives you systemic vasoconstriction to try to raise your blood pressure a little bit. Um, we get increased secretion of renin, and that's going to affect our blood pressure as well. We get increased um, secretion of antidiuretic hormone, so we're trying to preserve um, fluid. Um, we get increased secretion of glucocorticoids, and um, we end up, because you have more carbon dioxide than oxygen, you end up with um, acidosis and increased respiration. With prolonged shock, you get diminished cell metabolism, because we need that oxygen for cellular metabolism. Um, you get waste not being removed, and that leads to a lower pH, so acidosis is... Um, part of the cycle with prolonged shock. Complications can be acute renal failure, um, shock lung, they call it, or adult respiratory distress syndrome, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in the respiratory chapter in the next chapter. Um, liver failure, hepatic failure, um, paralytic ileus, um, stress or hemorrhagic ulcers, so it can cause problems in the digestive system. Um, infection or septicemia, um, disseminated intravascular coagulation, which we talked about last quarter in the blood chapter, um, and depression of cardiac function. So all those things can be life-threatening. So um, early signs that anxiety and restlessness, and that's due to the um, 
stimulated sympathetic nervous system. Um, it's compensated with um, elevated heart rate, tachycardia, um, cool, pale, moist skin, um, oliguria because you get uh, renal vasoconstriction um, because you get increased renin um, being secreted, thirst because that your body's trying to um, stimulate you to um, replenish those fluids and rapid respiration so that's going to lead to um, the increased respiratory rate. Um, progressive you get lethargy, weakness, fainting, uh, metabolic acidosis. So lots of um, effects to different organ systems in the body.